I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. The son is a witness. Yes, we have that crime club story for you. Come right over. <laughs> chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is. The Sun is a Witness by Aaron Mark Stein. A very unusual story of a design for killing that couldn't succeed without murder. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It was Tim Mulligan's job as an archaeologist to find out about dead civilizations. And he was finding out about the Anatsazi, the Indian cliff dwellers who inhabited the great canyon walls of the southwest many centuries ago. It was late morning, June 22nd, the second day of summer, and Tim Mulligan was digging carefully in one of the caves high above the canyon floor when George Dillon, the owner of the property and Tim's benefactor, climbed slowly up from the camp cave 30 feet below. He stopped to catch his breath. George, what are you doing up here? I, I, I wanted to see how you're getting along, Tim. You shouldn't have done it. You're hard. Where's Tony Blake? Well, he's around somewhere. You're not going to snitch on me, are you, boy? Well, you're his responsibility, Pop. He's your doctor. Yes, but he didn't join the outfit so he can take care of me. What do you mean? He wants me to take care of him. Oh, that. Yeah. And maybe I will, after he and my niece Marion get married. But right now, it's Indian history that's got all my attention. Oh, yeah. Well, I uh, dug up a grave, George. And it's Ozzy? I think so. I haven't unwrapped the mummy yet. Good. We can do that together. Go on, let's go. Hmm. What's that? The wind. No, Tim. No wind ever made a sound like that. Sounds human. Uh, it is human. And it's coming from... Yeah, George, George, take it easy. It's a cave. There's no one in there. The open grave. The Anasazi mummy. Tim. This has got to be a trick. Tim. George. I... My heart. Where's the digitalis? In the... It's all right. I, I just lost my breath. Huh? I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes. Help me down to the camp cave. You bet. You bet. Uh, let me call for Tony first. I feel a lot better with him around. Tony! Tony Blake! out of range. Let's go. How is he, Tony? Shh, shh, shh. He, uh, he just fell asleep. Hmm? Uh, let's get away from this cave opening. I don't want him disturbed. Okay. Now, what about that ghost, Tim? Somebody's trying to kill your patient, Doctor. Hmm? Do you think he can be scared to death? Well, with his heart, anything can happen. That's what I mean. Where's Marion? Are you kidding? Not this trip. You, Marion, and I are the only ones here with George. The others... Well, that's where she went, to the others at the ranch house. When? This morning, while you were digging for your ghost. She was worried about her brother. Oh. Oh, of course, it's been four days since Fraser went back to the house with Matt Casey to get provisions. I didn't realize... Uh, now, look, Tim, i got to talk to you about something. No? Yeah? Give up this crazy project. Give it up. It's not doing George any good. His heart can't take it. I'm not his doctor, Tony. And I am. So what? He won't listen to me. As long as you're on the job, he wants to be with you. Don't you understand? Yes, I think I do. He has a fibrillator heart in a very bad shape. And the slightest stimulation... You're not worried about that, Tony, are you? What? You've got an axe of your own to grind. And it's beginning to look like a battle axe. Don't get dirty, Mulligan. I'll try not to. You can't cut me out, so you're trying to move me out. 
Anything to get George's mind off Indians and onto your sanitarium project. The darn sight more useful than digging for dried up bones. That depends on how much of a scientist you are. I told you not to get dirty, Mulligan. Stop waving those fists. You're liable to hit yourself in the face. Jim! Tony! George! Come in here, both of you. Uh, I, I thought you were sleeping. I heard every word you two said out there. When do you think I'm going to die, Tony? If you continue to stay here, George... I'm going to stay here until Timothy finishes what he's doing. And there's no telling. There's nothing I can do about it. Are you quitting? No, I'll be around if you need me. You shouldn't have been so rough with him, Pop. Tim. You know what, George? Tim, do you really think somebody's trying to scare me to death? It's possible. Hmm. That fellow? I... I don't know. I'd rather not believe your own doctor's out to kill you. He's the only one here with us, Tim. And if that sound we heard was not a ghost... What's that? Rattlesnake. Where? In here someplace. Now, stay where you are, George, and don't get excited. I'll, uh, I'll look for it. Wait. Try not to get excited, George, and don't get off that cot. You'll never find it, Tim. If it's in this cave, I will. It isn't. What? It's in this wall next to me. Solid rock. And we can hear the rattle. Oh, wait a minute, George. I don't want to believe in ghosts, but nobody can make that sound come out of solid rock. Oh, wait, wait. All right, Pop, it's gone. We can relax. <laughs> yeah, Tony's right. This is a bad place for you. I, I'm not afraid, Timothy. But I am. I'd uh, like to get you back to the ranch house where you might get an even break. I'm not running away. Good for you. I'm taking you away. Now, sit tight. I'll get Tony and we'll load the stuff into the car. Tim, does that mean you're giving up your work here? No, indeed, Pop. It means I'm going into another business. Ghost hunting. Well, George, as soon as we get to the ranch house, you start taking things easy. I'll do nothing of the kind, Tony. Say, Tim. No? How soon do you expect to go back to the camp? Right after we get you sent. Good. I'll get Matt Casey to go back with you. He knows every inch of that canyon. And if someone's out there playing ghost, or was... Don't be surprised if it was one of the Indians from the reservation. Is that your theory, Tony? Uh, they're very superstitious about their dead being dug up, Tim. Especially if they're going to be used as museum pieces. That's enough of that. Slow down. There's the ranch house. Oh, say, there's, uh, there's Fraser walking away from his car. Honk the horn, Tony. Ah, look who's here. He must have come out just behind me. Is the expedition over? Temporarily. Uh, give us a hand with the luggage, Frazier. For you, Uncle George, anything. Where's the rest of the party? Well, who do you mean? Matt Casey and Marion, of course. Are you trying to kid me? Well, aren't they here? No. <laughs> Some joke, huh? Frazier, Marion left this camp this morning. She was coming to see how you and Matt were getting along. Matt and I? But Matt went back to camp two days ago. He took a truckload of provisions. Are you sure? Now, look, Tim, I was here when he left. You smell as though you might be foggy about things. I've had a few drinks, but I know what I'm talking about. I pick up the stuff in town, and Matt took it from here. Why didn't you come back with him, Frazier? I took a liking to civilization, Uncle George. So after Matt bounced off, I bounced back to town where the civilization is beautiful and lively. I got back a few minutes ago. You were there for two whole days? I couldn't help it. The attraction was magnetic. Can it be proved, Frazier? Don't be a comedian, Tim. What's mine is mine. What about Marion? I don't know, Tony. Sis might have been here... Say, maybe she hit for town. For some lively civilization? What does well, that mean, Mulligan? Nothing personal, Dr. Blake. Why don't you take care of your patient while I go back to the camp to find out if the spirit is still functioning? Hello? Hello? Anybody here? Hello, Mary. Where is everybody? Why didn't you answer me? Uh, one, one question at a time, please. I've been running around in circles all day. First the ranch house, nobody there. Then back to this. I, I'm a little winded. Just give me time. Where is everybody? Everybody but Matt Casey is at the ranch house. Why? They gave up the ghost. Huh? What are you doing up here on top of the canyon wall? Oh, this is going to be a national park someday. Uh -huh. Monument to Indian culture. Don't you feel proud of what Uncle George is going to do? I didn't see your car below, Marion. Always stick to the subject. You can't lose that way. 
My car isn't parked in the canyon. I came up the back way for a change. Mm-hmm. Bet you had a very good reason, too. Perfect. I got tired of the canyon road. Of course. Mad Casey must have had the same feeling about it. What? Well, look down there where my car is parked. His truck's there, too. So? Yes, and it's loaded to the hilt with provisions. I call that being very ruthless. Yes. All that good food left down there to spoil, and I'm starving. Well, at least you've got a doctor who can feed you vitamins. Funny man. Unless you're a ghost and you don't need vitamins. What does that mean? Haunt me and find out. Are you crazy? Try it. Say, a hi, a hi. Come on, come on, say it in a very deep voice. You are crazy. As deep as you can make it. A hi, a hi. Yeah, I've always wondered about you archaeologists. Uh, excuse me, I have a date with a oh, mummy. Now, wait a minute. Now, listen, you... Look. What? Lying under that rock. I don't... You must be seeing things. Yes, everything. And it's only the tail of a rattlesnake. Why, how wonderful. Another item for your collection? Would you mind if I picked it up? I wouldn't mind if you wore it on your nose. Thanks. I didn't know you cared. Eh? It still rattles. Yeah, I know something else that rattles. What? What was that? The ghost. I shook this rattle close to the rock. And... Yes, all I've got to do is get this rock out of the way like this. Now... Ah! What's happening there? Ah! A perfect chimney right through the canyon wall. Would you like to make a voice test, Marion? Uh, me? No, thank you. I don't like to hear myself talk. Not even in the interest of science? Goodbye, Tim. I'm going home. Oh, wait, wait. I'm going with you. There's so much I'd like to tell your uncle about a hole in the ground. <laughs> Uncle George, say, you had quite an experience up at the camp. Tony was just telling me about the ghost. Yes, and it's occurred to me with Matt Casey missing... Oh, he wouldn't try to kill me, Dr. Blake. I didn't say that he would, George. He's been working for me for 27 years. We're old friends. Frazier, I want you to organize a searching party for Matt. All right, but if you ask me, he's going on a bender. I don't think so. He's done it before. Why, there were times when he'd bust out for a whole week. He never did it when he had a special job to do. He knew we were waiting for those provisions at the camp. Yes, that's right, Fraser. Yes. He knew that I was waiting for something else that was much more important to me. Something else? Yes. Well, you might as well know about it now, Fraser. You too, Tony. I sent Matt Casey back here to type up a new will. Oh? Yep, I've decided to give all this property to the government for a national park. Well, that's nothing new, if that's all you've decided. That's all, Fraser. The rest of my property and all my cash go to you and Marion. Uncle George. Yeah? <sighs> Nothing. You're just a swell guy. I'd better go out and organize that searching party. Yeah. And this for you, Tony. No sanitarium, huh? Yeah, that's up to Marion. If she wants to set one up for you after I'm dead, she can do it. With my blessing. <laughs> Still puzzles me. Oh, please, Tim. I'm tired of you being puzzled. Why did Matt Casey use this road instead of the canyon road? Why is an archaeologist? Would he have any reason for wanting to be heard but not seen? Oh, dear. Would you have any reason? <laughs> Excuse me. The company I keep. <laughs> All right, Marion, you don't have to talk to me. I don't wear a badge. You don't know how pretty that makes you look. Yeah, I think I do. By the way, why don't you and Tony get married? There's no hurry. He's broke, isn't he? Da, da, dee, and a big da, sanitarium da, da, with his da, name da, all over it could um, solve an ugly problem. Uncle George is Tony's patient. By design. What do you mean by that? You brought Tony out here. Oh, well, suppose I did. That doesn't mean... Now, look here, Mr. Mulligan. I don't like your insinuations. So there's one thing about the great Southwest that always fascinates me. Don't change the subject. Buzzards. What? Over there on that pile of rocks. Well, you're not stopping, are you? Of course. Where there are buzzards, there's death. And where there's death, uh, I'm an archaeologist, remember? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I want to get back to the ranch house. You will. I'll just take the ignition key out to make sure you don't do it without me. Would you like to join this expedition? No. Oh, that's too bad. You don't know how cultural those things can... Alien. What is it, a pioneer? There's a body under those rocks. A human body. 
What? Timothy Mulligan, if you're kidding Just me... Just a hand showing. Part of an arm. Good heavens. Looks like a man's. He must have been caught in a rock fall. Well, let's dig him out. He might still be alive. No, no. Not with rigor mortis, Marion. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. His fingers. All right, Marion. We better start digging. It's going to take a little time. This one last rock. Now, come on. Heave. Heave. Don't relax. Keep going. Come on. What? What was that? And we'll look later. Let's get this rock off first. Yeah. Oh, sit down, Tim. Yeah. Maybe it's better go back to the car. All right. What'd you pick up? Now this uh, this roll of film must have been spread out under part of that rock. Well, Maybe when the pile hit him, it bounced out of his pocket. Oh, you! And when we moved that rock, it. Snap back on the roll. You would think that important, wouldn't you? What's a dead body to you? I'm sorry, Marion, but there's nothing we can do for Matt Casey except turn him over, face up. Yeah. There are things I don't understand about this. Matt being here, and his truck two miles up the road, and an old hand like Matt being caught in a rock fall. What was he doing in this cave? Oh. Uh, Marion, Marion, oh, no. don't, don't look. Oh, Marion, for Pete's sake, get a grip on yourself. Here, let me take you back to the car. Oh, Lord, you leave me now, alone. Now, please, listen to me. I've known him practically all my life. He was my uncle's oldest friend. And listen to me in trying to understand what I'm saying. How are we going to tell Uncle George about this? Marion, Marion. Uh, it was no accident. Well, Matt was not killed by a rock fall. What? What'd you say? He was murdered. Tim, I've had enough of you. Now listen. Matt was clubbed to death and brought here. I don't want to hear anymore. Then look. He was lying in the sand, face down. His face was covered with blood. Dried blood. But the sand is clean. Tim. You see what I mean? Please. Take me back to the ranch house. I'm afraid I'm going to be very sick. Is that you, Frazier? No, George. It's Marion and Tim. Marion. Marion, darling, where have you been? Not now, Tony. We've got to talk to Uncle George. What's the matter? I thought it might be Frazier. He went out to organize a searching party for Matt Casey. Oh... Well... What is it, Marion? Tim, maybe you better do the talking. I don't feel up to it. What's wrong? Where's Matt? I'll tell you, George, but I want you to sit down. Take it easy. I'll do nothing of the kind. Where's Matt? I say nothing until you sit down. He... He's dead, isn't he? Huh. Oh, my Lord. Matt. Tony. It's all right, Tim. I'll know what to do. Where'd you find him? Under a rock fall on the county road. Matt? Under a rock fall? Did you bring him back with you? No. We left him there. I had to notify the sheriff. Sheriff? He was murdered, Uncle George. Holy evidence is there. We didn't want to disturb a thing. Murdered? Matt, murdered? Oh, get the glass. Where is it? In a bottle in the dresser in George's room. Quick. Marion, get the glass of water and a spoon. George. Ah, George is going to be all right. He'll be all right. Can you hear, George? Tim, Marion. Here, yeah, Tony. Anything I can do? Yes, get Marion to hurt with that water. Marion! Yes, yes, the cupboard door was stuck. I couldn't get it. Here, give me that spoon. That's the worst attack I've ever seen to have. Now, if I could get him to swallow this stuff. Oh, he's spitting it out. Oh, quick, you've got to get it down. Marion, hold his head back. No, I can't. Hold it back, I tell you. Now, Tim, I want you to force his jaws apart and keep his mouth open. I've got to get this stuff down. There's no time to lose. All right. That's done. Now, I'll make sure. Yeah, the water will wash it. push it down. There. Uh, now, let him relax. Here, Tim, take this bottle. Hmm. I'm going to check his pulse. Oh, what's wrong? But the digital talus isn't working. Yeah, right, Tim. Never acted like that after taking the medicine. George! Uncle George, please! It's all over, Marion. He's dead. <laughs> I 
I didn't think, Tony. I, I just spoke without thinking. Marion, there's no use blaming yourself anymore. It was bound to happen sooner or later. I didn't have to throw it at him. I, I didn't have to yell murder. Ah, here. There you are. Take this pill. What is it? A sedative. No, ah, no, I don't. Come on, I'm... come on. Be good to yourself. You'll sleep for a few hours. I, who's that? I don't know. Now, look, dear, you're as jumpy as a bee. Now, take this. Hi, Tony. Uh oh. Oh, oh, Fraser. Come outside for a few minutes. I want to talk to you. All right. Hey, what's the matter with you, Marion? You've been crying. Uncle George is dead. What? He had a heart attack. And it was my fault. Oh, no. Oh. Dead. Tim and I found Matt Casey's body under a rock fall off the county road. It looked like murder, and I... Like Sad. a fool. Like a stupid, hysterical fool. Like I couldn't keep it to myself. I, I wasn't going to tell him. I was going to let you, Tony, break it to him. Easy. What do you mean? Well, we found Matt's body. It was... Wrapped up in a blanket. I guess Tim must have done that to keep the buzzards off. But did you tell the sheriff? No, a couple of the men took the body to the mortician in town. We thought... Tony, how quick did he go? Uncle George. Too quick, Frazier. Even the digitalis couldn't help him. It couldn't help Nothing him. Nothing could, Frazier, when it's not you. Oh, what do you mean, Tim? Here's a bottle with a digitalis uh, label on it. I want you to taste its contents, Dr. Blake. What are you trying to say? I'm not trying. Go ahead, taste it. I put that label on there myself. I'm sure you did. And I'm sure you meant to do the right thing. Well, what's it taste like? Quinidine sulfate. Yes, that's what I thought. A powerful heart stimulant. When that gets into a fibrillator heart, it becomes a killer. Tim! I'm afraid so, Marion. No, Uncle George was not murdered. I'll never believe it. That bottle proves it, whether you believe it or not. How about it, Tony? Why... Uh... Don't understand. Did you have quinidine sulfate in your collection of bottles? Yes, but that doesn't mean that I... Now, look here, Tim. I'm the only doctor for miles around. I keep a lot of medicines for emergency purposes. Of course, go Can't you two fight this out some other time and some other now, place? Now, wait a minute, Fraser. I don't want any more talk. Not right now, anyway. Okay. Now, say no more. Until the sheriff gets here. I'll send for him myself. Good, good. Later. I think Marion and I should have some time to ourselves, don't you? Before Uncle George becomes Exhibit A? Well, that's your privilege. Well, if anyone should want me, I'll be in my room wondering about things. Oh, hello, oh, Marion. You've been in here so long, I thought you'd died. Mm, no such luck. What are you doing? I'm uh, developing. What? Not my muscles, honey. Not your personality, either. Touche. Did, uh, Fraser send for the sheriff? I don't know. He's been hibernating in the study all afternoon. Now, look, Tim. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to believe a lot of things you've said about murder. That's so kind of you. But is it going to do anybody any good to make a fuss about it? Won't do the killer any good? Be reasonable. Fraser and I are very rich now. And, and... I'm very much in love with Tony. Ah, I'm a stubborn cuss, Marion, when I'm right. And you haven't got enough money to make me think wrong. How much do you want? Nothing. Excuse me, Marion, I want to switch on the lights. Suppose I were to kill you. Huh? Oh, in that case, I'd be dead. No one would ever know. Frazier and Tony wouldn't tell. Think about it, Tim. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff. Here, Mary. You disappear. It can be done, Timothy. There's a lot of open land out here. Places people don't go to. Well, think of the place you'd go to, Marion. Mayor, Mayor, I want to show you something. Tim! Now listen, Marion. I've got a lot of friends in New York, and they know where I am. And if they don't hear from me, they're going to wonder and ask a lot of questions. So put down that gun and come over here. I'm not interested in a strip of film. But you should be. This is the film we uh, found next to Matt's body. And it tells an amazing story. What? Yeah. Uh, do you see those four dark streaks on the negative? Well, what about them? Now, they all start at one point and then spread like a fan. The first one is short. second one's a little longer. The third one is the longest. And the fourth one is shorter. So what does it prove? It proves, Marion, that the sun is a witness. And right here on this negative, it's pointing four fingers at a murderer. What? Now, hold oh, that gun. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> a twist of the wrist, and we're equals again. Shall we go now? 
I'd like to see the other members of your family, present and future. You'll never convince me, Mulligan, that four streaks on a negative mean murder. How about letting me try, Tony? You also said, Tim, that you know who killed Matt Casey. Oh, I did say that, didn't I, Fraser? Yes. I'll go a step further. The person who killed Matt also killed George. I've had enough of this. I want you to get out of here, Tim. In time. But whether you listen to me or not doesn't matter. I know you'll listen to the sheriff. All right, Tim. Prove your sunstreak theory. Thank you, Doctor. Well, Marion and I found this film next to Matt's body. He was lying at the entrance to a cave, and the rocks were piled high. So? No sun or light flooded that cave. The film wasn't ruined, but somehow one ray of sun got through between the rocks and left these marks on the film. But where's the murderer, Tim? In this room, Fraser. Today is the 22nd of June. Yesterday was the first day of summer, the longest day of the year. Do you see now what these streaks mean? That's still a lot of nonsense The to day me. before yesterday was shorter. And the day before that, still shorter. The position of the sun changes every day. As the days get longer, the sun rises higher. Anybody want to question that fact? Oh, I see what you mean, Tim. According to that evidence, Matt was killed four days ago. Yes, Tony. He didn't return to camp two days ago, as Fraser told us. <laughs> Fraser! Oh, what, what's the use? It's going to be found out sooner or later. Nobody believed Tony would deliberately give Uncle George the wrong medicine. Fraser! I, I didn't plan it that way when I started. I, I, I was going to frighten him to death, but it didn't work, so I came back here and switched labels on the bottles. The, the medicines looked alike, the same color. I would have done anything then to get Uncle George out of the way. Why, Fraser? Well, well up at the camp, I, I overheard him talking to Matt Casey about a new will. Yes? I, I didn't know what was going into it, but I, I was sure he was going to cut me out. He didn't like some of the people I'd been fooling around with in town. So you killed Matt Casey to keep him from bringing back the new will? Yes. But, but if I'd only read the thing before I burned it, Uncle George would be alive now. I'd have known. <laughs> Lord, help me. I'd have known. <laughs> That's right, Tim. George told us. This whole estate goes to Marion and Fraser except his property. Yes, the National Park. Fraser, why didn't you fix those bottles after you switched them? I'd have known. He told me and I'd forgotten what I'd done. I was too happy. <laughs> too happy. <laughs> <laughs> And so closes tonight's Crime Club book, The Sun is a Witness, based on a story by Aaron Mark Stein. Stedman Coles did the radio adaptation. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Raymond Edward Johnson played Tim Mulligan. And Sidney Smith was Tony Blake. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the Crime Club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have a very exciting story of a boat ride that was planned by death. It's called The Grey Mist Murders by Constance and Gwynth Little. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we'll look for you next week. This program came from New York. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.